Of all the supplements out there, creatine is one of the most effective. Few, if any, supplements have been studied as much as creatine has. And after hundreds and hundreds of studies, it's clear that creatine helps you gain muscle and strength faster, perform higher training volumes, meaning lifting more weight for more reps, boost anabolic hormones like IGF-1, and increase cellular hydration. I may go as far as to say that creatine is the closest thing you can get to steroids without crossing off your natural status. In fact, one study published in Medicine and Science in Sports and Exercises took 19 healthy resistance trained men and assigned them in a double blind fashion to either a creatine group or a placebo group. Individuals in the creatine group gained significantly more strength on the bench press and squat. Not only that, but their muscle fibers grew two to three times more than the group who trained without creatine. So what exactly is creatine? Creatine is a small tripeptide found in meat. Theoretically, you should be able to increase creatine levels by eating fish and beef. In reality, however, we have to cook meat which denatures the creatine molecules, which means if you want to get enough creatine, you're going to have to supplement it. In case you want to know how it works, here's a quick overview. We have something called the phosphagen energy system. Our main source of energy is ATP. When we consume creatine, we form phosphocreatine which helps ADP form ATP. In other words, creatine helps us generate energy for muscle contractions. This energy system is most valuable for short duration activities, which is why taking creatine will boost your performance when lifting weights in heavy to moderate rep ranges. So if you want to build muscle faster, it's a good idea to take creatine. Different types of creatine. For a while, it seemed like there was a new type of creatine coming out every week. There's creatine ethyl ester, creatine hydrochloride, creatine citrate, creatine nitrate, micronized creatine, buffered creatine, and the list goes on. Despite the fact that these forms of creatine are more expensive and tout better effects, the truth is that the tried and true form of creatine is creatine monohydrate. And if a company claims that their form of creatine absorbs faster, consider this. The effects of creatine are cumulative, meaning they build up over weeks, not hours. Creatine monohydrate, the least expensive form of creatine, will absorb into your muscles perfectly fine so long as you're taking enough of it daily. Will it work for you? Some people claim creatine monohydrate does not work for them. But with all the scientific evidence, can this be true? A study published in the Journal of Sports Medicine and Physical Fitness found that the effectiveness of creatine on female athletes was less than that for male athletes. So if a female does use creatine, she likely won't experience the same benefits. Now, the guys are not completely off the hook either. A publication from the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research suggested there are non-responders to creatine, guys who can take creatine and experience zero benefits. If you want to be sure that creatine will work for you, there's only one way to find out. Try it. Keep in mind that you'll have to be patient as it can take two or three weeks for creatine to actually saturate your muscles. And since creatine is dirt cheap, it can't hurt to try. How to take creatine Guys often ask me if they have to load creatine, if they have to cycle it, and when to take it. So let's cover exactly how to take creatine. One study published in the Journal of Applied Physiology found that taking creatine with 50 grams of carbs and protein enhances the retention. 
Another study by Forbes and colleagues suggested that taking creatine post-workout leads to slightly greater benefits. That's why I suggest taking creatine with some carbs and protein after a workout. An easy way to do this is by taking creatine with your post-workout meal. With that being said, creatine's effects are dependent on creatine stores in your muscles. Your muscles become saturated with creatine after supplementing with it for at least a couple of weeks. So as long as you're consistent and take enough creatine, you are covered. Which brings us to the next question, how much creatine? As far as the dosage, you should aim to consume 3 to 5 grams of creatine monohydrate per day. And if you stop taking it, your muscles will desaturate after a few weeks. This means you'll no longer experience the benefits of creatine until you resaturate the muscles with consistent daily dosages again. Should you load creatine? Loading creatine refers to consuming larger amounts of creatine for the first week. Is this necessary? No. Will it saturate your muscles with creatine faster? Yes. So if you want your muscles to saturate with creatine in one week rather than three to four weeks, do this. Consume five grams of creatine in four separate meals per day for seven days. By the end of this week, your muscles should be saturated and you can continue by taking the maintenance dose of three to five grams per day. Is creatine safe? Despite all of the research on creatine, people will still fear taking it. There's a ton of research showing creatine will not harm you even if you take it for a couple of years. One thing to note is that creatine will increase intramuscular hydration. That means more water will be in your muscles. This is a good thing, and although some will claim it leads to cramping and dehydration, research actually suggests creatine doesn't cause these issues. If you want to be safe, just make sure to increase your water intake as most guys could benefit from hydrating more anyway. If you're afraid of hurting your kidneys or other organs, don't be. Plenty of research suggests it's not only safe, but even beneficial in regards to preventing injuries. One study showed that creatine is completely safe to take. There's little evidence that creatine is even harmful in the first place. If you have concerns due to a specific condition, simply consult with a doctor. Finally, every guy wants to know, does creatine cause hair loss? This fear was created when a study on rugby players suggested that creatine increases DHT levels in men. This is a hormone that can bind to receptors in hair follicles, causing hair to get thinner and fall out faster. Although it sounds scary, it was just one study and we need more research to confirm it. In fact, Hawkins and colleagues even showed that DHT increased naturally when exercising anyway. So we can't yet be certain that creatine is to be avoided if you want to keep a full head of hair. So there you have it, everything you need to know about creatine. While supplements in general are more beneficial as additions to an intelligent nutrition and lifting program, they can definitely accelerate your results. Did you find this video helpful? If so, click the like button below as it'll truly help out the channel. Also, if your training and nutrition are in order and you're looking for a bit of an edge, be sure to check out my science-based supplement line. Each product was created using scientifically proven ingredients, all clinically dosed and guaranteed to produce results. If you want to check those out, head over to musclemonsters.com forward slash supplements or click the link in the description below. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe for more videos and don't forget to turn on post notifications so you don't miss the next one. Peace.